Nous avons maintenant à aborder la question peut-être du commerce, si euh, Barctaio veut bien nous éclairer de sa propre expérience. It would be for us a great privilege to have your own experience as a Minister of Trade on this element of globalization. We had, as I said, the formidable expansion of global trade, some weakening of global trade, at least of the correlation between global growth and global trade. Uh, could you enlighten us on the present situation and the future? Please, okay. Minister, you have the floor. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I also want to uh, congratulate uh, Chairman Mongbuil for holding this uh, miraculous uh, conference at uh, this time. And I also want to thank uh, WPC organizers uh, for inviting me. Well, this morning, uh, I would like to share uh, with you uh, some of my thoughts on the topic of this session. Uh, from the perspective of trade specialist, uh, because my uh, background is mostly in the uh, trade field. I would like to begin my uh, brief remarks uh, with my observations uh, of some recent trends related to uh, international trade. First, uh, we can see in many countries these days, the general public's view on uh, free trade and globalization have been changed to be somewhat uh, negative. In other words, uh, the general public tend to think uh, free trade <coughs> and globalization are some of the major reasons or causes of high unemployment and income polarization. As you know very well, uh, in this case, politicians use this sentiment uh, for their political campaign in the election and often argue that uh, more jobs can be created through less imports and more domestic uh, production buy American, uh, hire American, and also reshoring incentives as uh, some examples of recent U.S. government policies aiming to boost uh, domestic employment and production. The second uh, observation is the areas of U.S.-China uh, disputes are being expanded from trade to national security and high-tech competition. The U.S. Uh, claim that the unfair industrial subsidies of the Chinese government is the key issue. And accordingly, uh, the U.S. government launched export restriction measures against China. Interestingly, on the other hand, China argues that U.S. export restrictions are causing a global market failure. Therefore, the in uh, intervention of the Chinese government should be strengthened. I heard this from Chinese experts arguing this kind of stories when they hear about the you know, U.S. Uh, sanction against uh, China. Third, intensified political uh, competition between U United States and uh, China, as well as difficulties coming from the COVID-19 pandemic, have led the U.S. to build its own secure, so-called resilient supply chain for high-tech products such as semiconductors and batteries for electric vehicles. Fourth, the responses to climate change are being strengthened, and the scale of digital trade is rapidly increasing. Well, these trends uh, have directly or indirectly affected globalization. However, uh, according to some OECD experts, although certain products and specific firms have been negatively uh, uh, somewhat uh, affected by these trends, Aggregated data collected by the OECD has not yet shown any significant change of the uh, global value chain structure. We understand each government can use policy measures to pursue its specific national goal, such as building its supply chain at the national level to protect the national security and promote industrial self-reliance. Even in this case, uh, however, firms will try to bypass uh, these measures in order to achieve their own goals of profit maximization. Firms can do this through uh, various means. Uh, for, for example, diversifying their supply sources, uh, shortening, regionalizing, or even redesigning global value chain, and so on. In other words, uh, firms are always considering uh, various factors such as cost, including wages, access to the resources, availability of intrinsic assets, 
proximity of consumers and so on when they construct their supply chain. Of course, uh, firms cannot ignore completely the policies of the government as well as its alliance partner countries. In the case of Korea, as you know, maybe leading firms such as Samsung, LG, and SK have recently decided to make a huge investment in the United States as the U.S. tried to build its own supply chain of semiconductors and batteries. However, if other major countries, which are closely related to, China, to, to Korea, uh, insist on establishing supply chain at their own national levels, Korean firms may have to invest in Europe, in China, or in Korea. So there are some concerns that maybe this could lead to overinvestment or, uh, and or excessive facilities of the Korean uh, companies in the end. So I think in the future, uh, rapid digitalization, increasing risks of climate change, rapidly growing AI technology, sophistication of manufacturing and so on will influence more on globalization than government policies. Uh, of course, the firms will somehow be able to adapt uh, to these uh, trends and continue their globalization activities. In order to see globalization evolving in the right direction, in the future, it would be crucial to provide the right uh, business environment with transparent and fair multilateral rules for uh, various fields. However, today, we do not have any clear multilateral trade rules for important issues which may significantly affect uh, globalization of, of the firms, such as industrial subsidies, measures, to, uh, measures related to climate change, uh, like carbon border adjustment taxes and digital trade. As we are all aware, the multilateral trading system of the WTO does not properly function these days. In fact, it faces most uh, serious crisis uh, since its launch in 1995. Although the 12th WTO Ministerial Conference, the highest decision-making body of the WTO, will be held in Geneva at the end of the next month. But uh, experts uh, do not expect much about the results. So, uh, furthermore, we don't find any uh, leadership among major countries uh, in strengthening the multilateral trading system. So, in conclusion, the world trade order will remain unstable, and the WTO will not play a constructive role for future globalization. I, I'm, I'm a little bit pessimistic, but I'm sorry for that. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed, uh, Minister. Uh, you are... Uh, terminating your statement on a rather somber note, obviously, <laughs> but unfortunately, I think it's realistic.